Why doesn't this look right? Unresolved Gestalt! Hey there, intelligent designers. I'm Trace, and this is D News. Your brain evolved to look at the natural world, and you might think, ugh, what a mess. There's dirt and leaves and plants and stuff scattered everywhere. But that's not really true. When you look at a tree, you don't see a branch and a leaf and a trunk. You see a tree. But why? In 1912 in Germany, three psychologists named Max Wertheimer, Wolfgang Kula, and Kurt Kafka started the Gestalt psychology movement. Gestalt means placed or put together, with the base idea being the whole of anything is greater than its parts. A great example of Gestalt psychology in action is watching a movie. It's really a collection of still images, but together the still frames become so much more. Another example is this. You see it as lights moving around the marquee. But if you think about it, you know that that's not what's really happening. If you were to look at just one light bulb, it simply turns on, then off, then on again. Our brains create the movement and the story. That's not actually the reality. There are numerous Gestalt principles. Similarity, continuity, prognons or simplicity, symmetry, closure, and common fate, just to name a few. The law of proximity or grouping says our brain groups things that are near each other together. Unless, of course, they're different, in which case the law of similarity comes into play, which says we will group similar things first. We'll also assume, because of the law of continuity, that the smoothest curve is the correct path to follow. Though, if that curve intersects another, we'll see the overall group in its simplest form, aka its prognons. And of course, we prefer symmetry. We don't see these as one, two, two, one, but rather two, two, two. Our brain turns them into sets. Of course, you don't have to see anything to perceive something. The principle of closure describes how your brain does it for you, like here in the implied triangle. There's no triangle there, but you see one. Then if this group moves, we assume they move as one because of the principle of common fate. All these things are ways for our brain to organize visual information. Over the last century, psychologists and designers have been studying how our brain perceives the world around us and the stories it tells our conscious mind. That's important because how we see the world affects decision-making, bias, causal reasoning, memory formation, you name it. Some would argue perception is far more powerful than reality. In fact, according to a fascinating study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, these design principles are what allow us to read. When humans look at words, we see them as shapes, grouping them, recognizing the shapes, and following along with the lines on a page, or around in a circle along curves. Think kinetic typography. You can follow what I'm saying not because you're reading it necessarily, but because of design, understanding, psychology, and neural pattern recognition. When you're reading scrambled text, you're still getting their shape and using a bunch of brain regions to process the visual cues. Man, brains are awesome. Understanding how our brains organize visual information is super important because decoding all that information takes effort. It burns energy. Maybe this is why we like well-designed spaces, because it takes fewer cognitive resources to understand them or accomplish tasks while in them. But what do you think?